Hey Woodworkers, welcome back. Uh, I wanted to talk about sharpening a scraper, which I've already talked about before, but this one's a little bit different. This is about preparing a scraper for uh, wood finishing. So, um, so what I have here is a scraper that's been tired and it's in need of some sharpening. So if you can see these, these little shavings here, they're okay. But the duller this stuff gets, Kind of end up with this this little powdery stuff. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, so this powdery stuff is is not really the long curls or shavings that I'm after. So this one is definitely tired. Okay, so we I was talking about sharpening these scrapers uh, before for general woodworking applications. Um, I would use a file, uh, more of a fine or a mill bastard file, for creating a fresh surface for us to sharpen with. Uh, because this is going to be for finishing, I really want to have as few ridges or scratches into the surface as I possibly can. So I'm going to do a slightly different version of this. <clears throat> I'm going to use water stones to, to do all my sharpening for what it is I'm talking about here. Um, conversation about what grit is important for what we're doing um, it, it, up to a certain point. It, you can definitely make yourself crazy with what stone you're using, but all of this is going to be exponentially finer than what you would get with a, a mill file for uh, for creating a new surface here. So what you saw me do, just laying the scraper flat on the stone, what I'm trying to do is get from phase number one to phase number two. Uh, in phase number one, if you can see, there are these tiny little horns here and here, and those are the residual pieces that's doing the cutting. So I want to get rid of those because there's no way to elongate those or to make them sharper or better. And a lot of times these things break off after use, and that's why scrapers work beautifully for maybe the first three minutes or five minutes, depending on what you're doing, uh, but it's not indefinite. So in order to get rid of those things, I need to lay the scraper down flat on the stone and just abrade those things away. So we have flat surfaces here and here. And I hope that's showing up in the video, but it may likely not be. All right, getting back to the grit of the stone, I'm using my 800 stone. Uh, one could definitely use a finer grit and that's fine. It, it ultimately is just going to make smaller, smaller, smaller scratches on the wood and that's ultimately what we're talking about. But if you're used to getting a beautiful surface quality off of a scraper using a file to sharpen, this is going to be night and day from what it is you, you have been doing or used to. All right, so at this point there is no area here that's being protruded proud of the edges of the scraper and I, I flattened all four of the surfaces that you would typically sharpen for scrapers. Now I sharpened it better. All right so I have this. Now what I need to do is create a new surface or new horns onto this scraper for doing the cutting and so what I need to do with nothing present here and here, I need to recreate these things. It's kind of similar to what we have here, but I need more surface area on these little horns. So with the sharpening stone, I'm gonna do just that. There's a couple of challenges though. If I were to set my, uh, my scraper here, and just go back and forth with this, this hardened steel is really aggressive and I could start putting nasty gouges into the stone, which I don't want to do because uh, then I have to flatten this and everything I'm sharpening after the fact, those little gouges are going to have a ill effect on my, my sharpening purposes. A lot of people, if they do use a stone for sharpening files, they can use the edge of the stone and do this. Far less concerned about the surface quality of the edge of the stone but even with that, I can start to feel these things are starting to pull, or not pull, but uh, make little gouges in that area. Uh, so I'm starting to feel that this is making progress, but I can also tell I have a long ways to go. 
what I'm trying to do in this orientation is to make sure that this file is truly uh, vertical. What I, I want to avoid, if this is truly vertical, then I'm creating a surface on this bottom edge here that is 90 degrees all the way, uh, I'm sorry, 90 degrees all the way across. If I start to tip this, then that geometry starts to change on this and you create uh, a really well cutting edge on one side, but not on both. All right, so I could continue to do that. Let me see how the other edge looks. We're kind of the same boat. So going back and forth with this, I can get there. There's a better way, however. So I am going to use the broad face of the sharpening stone. And I also want to maintain this orientation here to keep this as close to vertical as I can. Um, but I don't want to have the thickness of this scraper digging into the stone as I talked about. So uh, on the bandsaw, I've created just this little subtle curve on this board. All right, so this now does a couple of things. This piece of wood holds this thing under tension. It broadcasts from this tip to there to this inside edge, a nice flat facet all the way across. So it's gonna be easier once this is introduced on the stone to know where flat is. The other thing that it's doing is it's not gouging in just one area. It's kind of broadcasting all the way across the surface. All right. So I'm going to continue to do this until I can, I can feel the resistance of where that edge is starting to be a bit more present. approach a little bit. For the sake of time, I'm going to use a diamond stone for just a second to rapidly remove some of that material. This is making for entertaining screen time. Right. I'm sure you can't see this, but I'm going to try to do this audibly. If I were to scrape here, you kind of get a different tone. It's definitely making contact with my fingernail, but when I get to this area where it's cutting more aggressively, it's kind of a deeper sound, and you can see, uh, I can see, a little bit more of the shavings of, of my thumbnail. Hope that's not too gross. Uh, uh, so, all right, I'm making progress. This is getting flatter and more round. Oh yeah, no real idea 
as to why I took this out of my little holder, because I put it right back. show you here is that I have right in the center I, I see where I've made contact with the file previously and that's what I'm trying to remove so basically this has started a dish just a little bit which happens when using a, a file for flattening So at this point, this uh, scraper looks like we have in phase three. So straight across, I've got a good length of metal on both sides. I need to now bring those horns straight up. So jumping from three to four. In order to do that, I've got a burnisher. Burnishers are really the only tool that would work for this. We have a hardened piece of steel if I don't have something of equal or greater uh, density or hardness, um, then I'm just going to use this piece to start making cuts into this tool. So holding this thing dead flat, I'm going to get this burnisher also flat in line with this thing and just pull this all the way across that surface. I don't want to put any angles onto this burnisher. So if I tip it down, that's going to create some problems. If I lift it up, I'm really not making contact with where I need to. So just keeping this thing dead flat. I'll flip it around, do the same business. I'm doing my fingernail check, make sure that I'm not uh, getting any shavings there, which I'm not, which is perfect. All right, so at this point, those horns, are poking straight up parallel to these faces. So they're up in the air here. Now, if I were to do this, there's no way for that steel to make contact with this board. So what I need to do in order to put this in the useful position, I need to bring or fold those horns back down so that when I put this on the board, it starts to do its job of abrading or, or um, pulling this material away. Uh, all right. so trickiest piece here is that I need to start with this burnisher at 90 degrees to this long axis here. Uh, I need to start with 90 and then just break 90. The, the rationale is that anything 5 degrees or greater is way too aggressive and as I said it's going to cut beautifully for the first pass but then there's just not a lot of metal holding from that little horn to the scraper so if it's really aggressive that thing just shears off when you cut. So holding it at 90 and then just inside of that 90, three to five degrees are kind of great. How do I find or gauge what five degrees is, I'm asking? I have no idea. I just know what, what is 90 when I'm holding it here. And if I bring down the handle a little bit, I know it's not 90. So I'm getting a good grab on my finger and thumbnails. All right, so now, hopefully, this is what we've all been waiting for. Oops, there we go. All right, so hopefully this will make some sense. Okay. So now, holding this at the right angle, putting a little bit of a, a curve to it. You can start to see the differences with the shavings I'm getting. scraping as you remember from the other video is it's not really grain directionally specific or directionally specific oops so I can flip this board around and cut in both directions all right holding this at 
against the light. Not sure if you're gonna be able to see the magic of this. Oh yeah, you will. So in here, I don't have any mill marks. I don't have any really scraping or braiding sections. Uh, this, I'll have to do a little bit of work on to remove that little stripe there. Yeah, I think. Anyway, so I'm looking for a really high quality surface here. In doing this, the benefit of this is that I don't need to do as much in the way of sanding, which is kind of what we're all about. Um, but just for good measure, it's probably not a horrible idea. Something with 220, just going quickly with the grain, and then that's it. Softening the edges with the sandpaper, that's it, we're done. So we've skipped 80 all the way to 220 with a really good uh, sharp scraper using the sharpening stone. If you've done that, you'll be able to get these things really well dressed and it uh, doesn't matter the size. This is kind of a, a bad example because it went very quickly. It's going to be just as fast over a larger area if you have a dining table or something like that. Uh, it just means you have to do more resharping because as I said, scrapers work great temporarily. It's not a forever thing. Okay, hopefully that was helpful.